Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Barry Norman once again for the Option Rally Academy. And today we're going to be evaluating the markets and waiting for the, Jew, the German Zoo Confidence Index to be released. Um, we, the report is due out right on the hour at 10 GMT. So we're going to take the next few minutes and take a look at what the zoo is all about. And I can't even begin to tell you how to pronounce the name of the institute that releases it. It is about a mile long. It's a German word. But German Zoo Economic Sentiment surveys financial experts for their assessment of the direction of the German economy in the next six months. Now, a lot of people say, well, Germany, that's just a country. Why is that all so important? Well, Germany is the workhorse of the EU. And they are the locomotive that is expected to pull the EU out of its recession. They're also the ones that are keeping, well, they are out of recession, recession but to turn around their economic slump. They are also the leader in, in growth and turnaround. So if the, their economy is doing bad, that means the surrounding countries are doing poorly and also they're the financial center of all the money in the Eurozone. And again, if they don't have the money to back the ECB or back the outright uh, monetary purchase or the, the, uh, the bonds for all of the bad countries, it is th that big important part of Germany that affects all of this. So it has a huge effect on market sentiment and on the euro, especially the euro against the pound and the euro against the dollar. Those are the two big currencies that will be affected in today's trade. And we're going to be watching the euro dollar um, because the dollar is very high. The euro is weak against the dollar. Then we're going to look at that shortly. Now, last month, the numbers were extremely good for Germany. Uh, it, it posted at 62. Uh, it was against an estimate of 54.6. So if any of you attended uh, our trading the economics calendar, you've learned that the markets adjust to the previous and then to the forecast because that's where they set their expectations. So there is a point in which the report will either be market negative, market positive, market neutral, or exceptionally positive or exceptionally neutral, or exceptionally uh, negative. And today we're going to, going to look at this and determine what we expect from today's assessment and what we are going to, to classify market neutral, market positive, and market negative so that when the report comes out, we have some indication ahead of time what we think the currencies will be doing. Now, all indications so far is that it should come out pretty close to forecast because German data has been all right over the last month. Uh, it hasn't been as strong as it should have been. And the euro has been trading extremely high, which is good for certain things, but for especially exports, and Germany depends on a great deal of exports, it makes it very, very difficult to compete against countries like um, China and, of course, Japan, who has been using monetary stimulus and pushing down the value of their exports. Um, so when it comes against Toyota, against Mercedes, the loser is Mercedes. It also hurts them because their value of the, the money in their country is much higher, so they have to drop the value of their car or the price of their car to sell it in the U.S. when the dollar is weak. Uh, same thing in the U.K. when they're weak against, when they're very, very strong and the U.K. dollar is weak and they do the translation in, in currency value, it can force them to take a, a smaller value for the car because of the, the shift in the currency values. So it may be that as a new year, uh, so far 2014, we're seeing the same stuff as the Eurozone continues to struggle. The one bright light is out of Germany, which is showing some strength. Persistently weak growth could lead to deflation, and that's a big scare that is going throughout the Eurozone right now. They could actually see a Japanese-like deflation. You know, they're not creating new jobs. They're not creating growth. And they are getting stabilized, but what happens is that happens, you start to have deflation instead of inflation, and the inflation numbers have been very, very low because people's salaries are not going up. They can't increase costs. If they can't increase costs, they start to go to deflation. Okay. Now, will the ECB make a move? This is something that everybody's been watching very close, and they're really backed against the corner. You know, in November, the ECB dropped the... Um, 
their key in, uh, lending rate by 25 basis points to surprise everybody, but they're almost down to where they can't move anymore. They have a little bit of ammunition left um, doing some liquidity and stuff, but they're really kind of stuck as to what they can do. Okay, well, still not, it's still not been priced into the euro. Mr. Draghi has been doing nothing but talking up the euro. There is a good chance that the bank will set a negative deposit rate as early as March, which with interest rates at a record low of 0.025%. Now, that could happen, but that's not going to happen till later in the spring. Now, by the way, if you have any questions, you can feel free to write them in. Uh, and if you have any comments, to just write them in the little box, the chat and question window on your screen, and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Remember, we are competing against time. We have nine minutes before the release. So what we're looking at here is a chart of the dollar. This was taken oh, two hours ago when I was preparing for the webinar. So it's not the most accurate. We're going to go over in a few minutes and look at the live markets to see where things are. But the dollar has been recovering very, very nicely. Remember before the ECB did, I mean, the Federal Reserve dropped, uh, started tapering, the dollar had fallen down to 79, which is very, very low for the dollar. It had been trading in the 81 to 82 range all of last year and then started hitting about 80, fell down to 79, but it's been steadily recovering. Um, after the poor or surprising non-farms payroll report the first week of the month, um, the dollar has been recovering because every other report that's come out, except for the Michigan Consumer Confidence and Housing starts last week, uh, have been extremely good. Now, neither one of those were negative. Uh, neither one of those were bad. Both of the reports were good. They showed increases. They just weren't as high as the estimates thought they would be. So we have the dollar this morning trading at 81.32 on the charts. Okay, as I said, Saeed, this will affect the euro, U.S. dollar, and the euro pound. These are the two currencies that should re react to these. Okay. I I'm sorry, I don't know what you mean by no translation. I only give classes in English. Thanks. Now, we've already talked about why this report is, is important. This report is business sentiment throughout the Eurozone for what businesses think will happen over the next six months. Okay. It's, it's the same business people that are surveyed every month, and it's their attitude. If they think these are professionals, if they feel that their business is doing better or looking like it's going to get better, their sentiment is what affects all of the markets. Because if they think their business is going to start getting better, they'll start spending, they'll start hiring more people. And this is the, the, the wheel that starts turning the whole locomotive here. Okay. In the U.S., the dismal news from the non farms payroll report has been quickly overshadowed by the solid release and speculation that the Federal Reserve is going to taper once again. So the overall sentiment is bearish on the euro-US dollar because once this happens, we're going to see the dollar get stronger and the euro to go down. The euro should be trading about 132 and it's at 135 and change today. Okay, so again, now we're looking at the euro-dollar uh, from the option rally screen, and we can see that when I did this report a little while ago, it wasn't so long ago, it was trading at 135.576. The euro has been steadily climbing today, but it hasn't climbed that much. It's climbed from, you can see this morning about 6.30, it was trading about 135.520, and it's gone up a couple pips. Not enough to make a difference, but that means when it's going up, the euro is getting stronger and the dollar is getting weaker. Since the dollar, U.S. markets aren't open, there's no economic data for the U.S. at this point. It's the people are taking position before the release of data. Now, on the top of the screen, I have given you the support and resistance points or the support levels that we can see for the dollar, uh, the euro, U.S. dollar. It goes from 135.550, which is the lowest level of support right under it, to 135.15 to 134. Going up, it's going to go to 136.15, which is the next level of support, uh, next level of resistance to 136.75 to 138. 
Okay, so those are the elevator steps or the elevator floors that we will see the price moving between once this release comes out. Okay, we're down to four minutes before the release, so we're going to start moving forward. You're now looking at the pivot points or the support and resistance lines for the euro, euro, US dollar, again, just a little while ago. And you can see that the direct support directly under its feet is at 135.31, and the resistance is above its head at 135.43. So in a second, we're going to go to the live market to see where everything is sitting right now. Now, these are the five scenarios we're looking at today. Okay. Now, you should write these down. These are, should be your rules of the trade. If we get the German Zoo report released between 60 and 63, that's going to be what we call market neutral. That is within the range of where we expect the report to be based on forecast. If we see above that, 63.1 to 66, that's an unexpected higher reading and can send the euro, US dollar well above one resistance line. Okay. What that's saying is that the report's coming out better than the market's expected, and that means that there is more confidence. The confidence level of businessmen is much higher at the moment. Okay. If it comes out higher than 66, okay, we're going to see a very, very strong scenario, and we're going to see at that point the euro, US dollar climb steadily. That means the euro is going to get a lot of power. It's going to push up. We may see it go up into the 137 range. If it comes below expectations, somewhere between the 57 to 59.9 range, okay, that's a sharper decrease than forecasting could push the level the down one support level to about 135.15. If we see it well below expectation, we're seeing a report below 57, okay, a very weak report could rattle the markets, and the euro US dollar could break a second support level going down. That means it could drop as low as 132, 134. So these are the five scenarios. Now, I know you're all going to ask me, how do we reach these? Well, this is how we use the economics calendar, and we used the previous we used the forecast, and then we used our expectations today. So I'm going to take you over real quickly to a live economics calendar. Hold on, let me bring that up for us. And I've got one ready for you on the screen. Okay, let me, it's not popping. Give me one second. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we can see the first line across here is the 10 a.m. euro. The, it'll affect the euro as the German zoo economic sentiment, and underneath is the, the zoo economic sentiment. We're expecting a 63. The previous was the 62. We can open up the charts here to the right, and we can take a look as soon as it pops open here for you on your screen. Actually, the chart's not opening for them today. Okay, we can see now on, I'm just, there we go. If you go up here to history on the right-hand side, you can see that back in December, the report was a 62 against a forecast of 55. That was a, a day that we should have seen the euro skyrocket. Okay, we saw the previous was a 54. That was the last report. Okay, we saw before that it was staying in the 50 range. Okay, it had been down in the 40 range. If we get a 63 today, which is a very, very, very high number, uh, because you can see it's been steadily climbing up since August, September, October, November, December, but the fact is that the Eurozone overall has not been in improving at all. So this is what we're going to be looking very closely at when we get the results. Now, remember, when we're trading binary options, we don't, we're not going to jump in the markets the second that the report comes out. Okay, thank you. It is out at 61.7. There we go. It just popped up. It's exactly on time at 61.7. Let me refresh my screen, see if I can get it up here for you. Okay, there we go. Now, what we have is the zoo economic sentiment was way high at 73.3, and the, the overall zoo at 61.73. So let's go back over and look at the slide where we have expectations. And we're going to go over and see what's happening in the live markets. Okay, so let's go back to the expectations, see where this fell in.
There we go. So we got the report in at 61.7. Well, that is well within expectations. That is our top scenario. See where it says within expectations from 66.0 to 63. That is dead center of well within expectations. In such a case, the euro is likely to rise within range with a small chance of, of breaking higher. Okay. Because it was the bottom and the bottom half of the range, most likely we're going to see the euro staying pretty steady. So right now, let's go over live to the internet, and I'm going to try to bring up some live charts for us, and we're going to see exactly what is happening at the moment with the uh, euro US dollar. Let's go to Option Rally site. Okay, and we have right here. Okay, we can see the euro climbed all the way up here to 135.50, and it's tapered down a wee little bit. Okay, it's um, so let's go to a Java chart. We'll go take a look at the live streaming charts on FX Empire, and here we go. So we we can see that the market is at 135.38. We can see it actually hasn't even moved. It stayed completely sideways for the last 15, 20 minutes. So it has since 8 a.m. this morning, actually, so the last two hours, it has stayed within a very, very tight range, and it's having overall no reaction. Let me put a pen up here for you so you can see what we're talking about. Okay, so we can see that the euro is right here at 135.36. Okay. We can see that it has touched this line early this morning. See, right now, we look here. This is showing us at 9 o'clock. Let's, actually, let's move the scale over a little bit. Hold on, I've got to turn my pen off here for you, and then I'll move the chart over for you. Okay, so we're still at 135.38. You can see how it peaked up here a little bit at 9 o'clock this morning before the report. You can see it's dropped, but this drop as the report came out was four thousandths of a cent. And then it's recovered, and it is just about exactly where it was before the results. Um, so it's a little bit on the negative side, but not enough to trade for binary options because we would have needed it to stay lower. now. What you can see in a binary options trade, since it is lower, it's not going to. It's it's right down at the very bottom today. It's probably going to recover. The euro is probably going to recover later in the day. So if you can grab it at somewhere below one thirty five thirty five, you can probably get it for an upswing in a short term trade. So let's see what. Um, let's take a look at what's happening to euro GBP also. Okay, we can see the Euro GBP because that's where you're going to have the biggest effect right now. And at 10 a.m., it was right here, and it dropped, ooh, just a couple pips because we're looking at a one-hour chart. We're going to look at a 15-minute chart. We're going to see it much more harsh. But if we actually look at over a two-day range, it's really stayed in a, a very, very tight range since that report. Okay. Now, it has come down to the very bottom. And you could probably grab it for an up trade for the next expiry. Okay, same thing with the euro pound. Uh, let's take a look at where the euro and the dollar are. If it's dropped to the bottom of its range, I'm sorry, I keep going past here. Okay, see, it, we can now see that it's actually recovered. Okay, and is back exactly where it was before it started. So there's really no trading in the euro US dollar at all. Because it, it fell, uh, it instantly fell and then recovered. And if you notice, let me put a marker on here for you. 
it didn't have enough of a, a chance to – it's just some, some traders' reactions, some traders who had taken position or guesses before that had forced it to come down and then bounce back up. But if you notice, this is in the last six – this is all of six minutes. And what you see is it's actually right where it was when it started the day. And you couldn't trade this in binary options because you couldn't have closed it at the top or bottom. So if it would have, the first closing would have been at 10.10. 10. And as you see, it's fully recovered. So that's why you need to make these scenarios before. And whenever you get an economics report that comes out you know, sizably higher or lower than the forecast, those are the perfect trading opportunities. Like we, we did have last week at the non-farms payroll report. When it came out way under expectations, the markets reacted, and they reacted for a long period of time. And remember, with binary options, you don't want to guess. You want to get in the market. You want to wait for at least 10 minutes after the report to give the markets time to settle down and get a distinct pattern. Otherwise, what happens is you jump in there when you see this soar up, and you think it's going to keep on soaring, and it corrects itself. And you're stuck in that time frame because you're stuck with that expiry time. So you have to make sure that it's got the momentum to keep it either going up or down through your expiry time. So that's really how you trade the economics counter and how you would have traded today uh, the German Zoo report. They're not always tradable scenarios. And what it is, is, you have to remember, there's always three parts of trading. There's trading up, trading down, and not trading. All three are valuable decisions. So let's go over real quickly and then take a look at the Euro GBP and see what's happened here. The Euro GBP has continued to stay basically where it was. Actually, if you look at it, we locked it in <clears throat> at 83.234, and it hasn't changed at all since then. So that's where we're trading right now. So on that note, I'm going to say goodbye to everybody. Thank you for joining us. And we ha we're in about to announce a very, very live special uh, webinar. We're going to be trading the FOMC uh, decision on the 29th when the Federal Reserve makes their final decision as to what to do with tapering and Mr. Bernanke's uh, special class. So get in touch with your account managers and find out how you get a seat because that will have limited seats in that class because we have a huge request for that. So remember, that's on the 29th. It's happened at 7 p.m. GMT time. We'll be starting 15 minutes before that release. Okay. So get ready. Get in touch with your account managers. Get a seat in that class, and I will talk to you real soon. Thanks. Have a great trading week. Bye now.